Okay. Hello, my friends. Uh, I've always, this line has always meant something for me. It's, uh, children depart, miscellaneous relationships wither, friends move to distant places, friends die. Children depart, miscellaneous relationships wither, friends move to distant places, friends die. Sounds like Samuel Beckett, but no, it's actually Reader's Block by David Markson. And I'm going to put on some music right now. I feel like I should have some music on. I've had a couple of beers, as you can see. But uh, let me see here. Uh, what should we do? Put on some uh, Chet. Chet's always good. Put on Tenderly. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to do this one. Okay. Okay. Now, in the mid-90s, I was at the Barnes & Nobles on Bay Street, which is no longer there, and I was intrigued by the title. And uh, I read it. I have probably have read and reread parts of this probably about a about a hundred times. Uh, there are so many quotable quotes in here. I have had, I'd say I probably have owned about half a dozen copies. I will give copies out and never see them again. Um, it's an experimental book, it's an experimental novel, and when I read it, it just opened up my world. And uh, it, had, it, it uh, I cannot believe there was somebody out there that thought like this, that wrote like this, and it really has come to influence me as I read it again and again. I find it highly, highly addictive. Uh, David Markson is the writer's name. Uh, as I got into him, I started doing research on him. Uh, this is an early novel he wrote, not experimental, very straightforward. It's called Going Down, and uh, it's a uh, about American expatriates living in Mexico. It's at times a dark book, disturbing book. A lot of images. Uh, I vividly recall the the, the dilapidated church. Um, a lot of very bizarre images, but powerful writing. Extraordinary writing. When they did a reprint, which is what this is, I remember being disappointed that there was no sort of forward on, on there, something like that. Um, Really a great underrated book. If you go on Amazon.com to look it up, there are no reviews. Maybe I should write a review. I do highly recommend this book. Uh, I want to go into some sort of order here. So I'm going to put some things aside. Um, this is a reprint. Epitaph for a Tramp, Epitaph for a Deadbeat. Now in the 1950s, he wrote some books for um, entertainment purposes. And he even categorizes these as entertainments. Um, you know what? It is wonderful. It's some of the best type of pulp fiction writing you're ever going to see with some of the most interesting character development. I mean this as a compliment, but it reminded me of uh, the Lou Archer detective series that um, Ross MacDonald wrote, but actually better. And this detective, uh, Harry Fannin, uh, is in Greenwich Village back in the day when Greenwich Village was a haven uh, for the beatniks, for bohemians, for artists, for writers, and this is the world that he inhabits. Just an extraordinary book, extraordinary book. Um, after Reader's Block, this was a sequel to that. This is not a novel. Again, more of the same. Very experimental. Very unusual. I remember when I, uh, I this is. I've owned more than one copy of this. I remember passing it around to work in Seattle. Um, at the end of this book, David um, makes a reference to his cancer. And I remember being very upset by that. And I remember thinking that if somehow performance art could become literature, this was it. Really amazing. Um, in some of his own readings, uh, Markson has talked about this being a... Um, a um, poem, like a great big long poem, which works for him. That works for me too. Vanishing Point. This is third in his experimental novel series. He wrote four altogether. 
I've met people who think this is his best book. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but it is an extraordinary book. Uh, it is an extraordinary book. A um, lot of great quotes in here, a lot of great lines in here. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this book. I do recommend it. There's even a page of it for on Facebook. It definitely has a following. Uh, if you only read one of his experimental books and choose this one, you'd be on the right path. I am a big fan of this. I've, again, owned more than one copy. I've read all of his books several times, by the way. Um, look at that. I even own more than one copy currently of Reader's Block, which has a very luminous, very scary type of thing right here. Setting. Um, this, I remember when this book came out, there was a review in the New York Times Book of Reviews that described David Markson as the best novelist you weren't currently reading. Um, you know, he's always been a cult. Uh, what can I say? This is his last novel that he published. He did die somewhat thereafter, shortly thereafter. It was published. It has some pretty funny criticisms. Like, for example, he really hates Bob Dylan. And uh, I love Bob Dylan, but I thought it was kind of funny that he criticizes Dylan in this. Again, very clever. A lot of fantastic wordplay. And uh, just... Again, another very addictive book. Um, out of all of these, I thought Reader's Block was actually moments of sadness. Uh, suicide in Reader's Block was uh, a recurring theme in that, and madness and other things. This one seems to deal a lot with his loneliness and some of his health issues and things like that. Uh, but again, highly recommended the last novel. At one point, I actually thought about getting that title and that, that you know, the last novel tattooed somewhere on my body. Um, this book I got turned on to, again, I've owned more than one copy of this book, Wittgenstein's Mistress. There's even a, I wrote a novel that has yet to get published, but there's even a reference to the, this novel in the, in the, in my novel. This is one of the best books ever fucking written. Uh, Wittgenstein's Mistress by David Markson. In the beginning, sometimes I left messages in the street. You know, I, I can't walk past a homeless person. You know, Reagan cut the funding for the mentally ill, and you see all these people in the street who are clearly schizophrenic, and, you know, they're shouting, they're talking to somebody regarding the issue that might be from 20 years ago to somebody that's living across the country. You can't read this book, or I mean, you can't walk past these people and not think about this book. Uh, this book really captures something extraordinary, rare, and beautiful. Uh, this is one of the best books ever written. This um, is a masterpiece. Uh, it's one of my all-time faves, and it's a book that everybody should read. There's nothing else quite like it in literature. I am currently rereading this book, um, currently right now as we speak. Springer's Progress, David Markson, came out in the 1970s. As I'm reading this book, I, I usually cringe whenever people tell me uh, they're reading a book that would make a wonderful movie. However, when I'm reading this book, I actually visualize a very roguishly handsome George Clooney. You know, and maybe a Kate Winslet as the female character. I don't know. Maybe somebody younger than that. But it's about this writer by the name of Lucian Springer, who's in his late 40s. He's described in the book as being handsome as a coin who has writer's block, who's lazy, a little bit lazy, but charming, very handsome, and a pretty heavy drinker, who has an affair with a young editor novelist. And that's pretty much the book. Um, you never hate the character. You, uh, you love him despite himself. He's a fatal charmer. And the the entire book, I almost said film, the entire book is just filled with creative wordplay, wonderful quotes. There's a scene in the book where uh, the writer is uh, starting to find his mojo and he's starting to write again. And he gets a telephone call from a friend. He says to the friend, hey, I'm writing right now. And he says, hey, I'm writing my life. And within an hour, I'll be up to this phone call. Uh, the book, is, again, is Greenwich Village, the 1970s. Um, poets, writers are all throughout this book, including famous writers he actually knew. And when uh, people are discussing their lofty ambitions for why they write and what they want to accomplish, Lucian Springer says, If I write a line that inspires a pretty and lonely young woman, 
to pull out a highlighter and highlight it or underline it, then I'll be happy. <laughs> this book is filled with lines like that. I mean, just filled with brilliant, sweet lines. It would just make the... I hate romantic comedies, but as a film, if they kept it with the setting and kept a, and hired it well and, you know, held on to the dialogue, they could make a very wonderful, very much a thinking man's and thinking woman's romantic uh, comedy. Just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant thing, a uh, brilliant book. And as I'm rereading this book, and again, I've owned more than one copy, um, I realized that he actually, you know, uh, there's other writers I've been into, but he actually, uh, and I have a Hemingway quote somewhere on my arm, he actually has surpassed all those guys. Um, I will go on record saying that David Markson is my favorite writer. Now, as you guys know, you're my friends, I am covered with tattoos. And here I am, and I'm going to lift up my shirt here. I went out, this is a line that appears in his four experimental novels at the end. And I don't know if they're going to come out. It's in solid black. And yeah, I don't think it's going to come out really well. I mean, it came out, the tattoo is amazing. But I don't know if it's going to be filmed really well. But it says, nonlinear, discontinuous, collage-like, and assemblage, DM, which stands for David Markson. And uh, what I think that means is, what I think that means is, life is a clusterfuck, you know? Um, we always, it's a description of his writing style and his experimental novels, but I, what I think it means is life is a clusterfuck. You're very rarely ever single focused on anything, you know? Um, we always have four or five burners going on at once. And uh, I've, I've, the only books of his I don't have is The Ballad of Dirt, Dirty Dingus McGee, which I plan on getting. And there's also another crime novel uh, that uh, I have not read. I'm not sure if it's been reprinted or not. I might be able to find it. But um, what that phrase, I think, means is that there is no beginning, middle, and end. Movies, biographies, um, books... Try to do that. And right from the get-go, we're bombarded. Right from the day one in our lives, we're bombarded with several collage-like images at once. And people come in and out of our lives, and we always have multiple relationships going on at once. And, uh, yeah, that's what his literature means to me. That's what his writing means to me, and that's what that means to me. And I made this uh, video. I'm not even sure if you guys are filming it correctly or if I'm filming it correctly, but I made this video to show to the Markson family, because he unfortunately died before I ever got around to uh, writing a, um, a fan letter. But I'm going to send this to his, uh, one of his daughters, his, his daughter who's actually on my friend list on Facebook, and let her know what a big fan I am of his, and as an artist I feel a great influence of him. And uh, I don't know if you're able to communicate with him, but uh, just tell them thank you, thank you so much for me. Bye.